But right now we are joined by RNC co-chair Michael Watley, who I believe may actually be in Ohio today. Chairman Watley, it's great to have you back on the show. It is great to be on with you, Scott, and uh, greetings from Cincinnati. Nice. Uh, Just uh, spending the day with Bernie Moreno at a number of events down here and uh, really, really like the momentum that we're seeing here in Ohio. I'm seeing a bunch of different polling data, and and Sherrod Brown is is trying to raise money on the fact that he is trailing Bernie now by two points, but I've seen polls that that have Bernie Marino up slightly, have Sherrod Brown up slightly. Uh, One of the things I look at closely is Polymarket, which is the the betting site where people are actually putting money on who they think is going to win, and and Bernie Marino is leading now in Polymarket. What, What are your internals showing? Yeah, we feel really good about this race. I think two to three is probably about where we are today. Uh, We've seen a very nice break over the last several weeks uh, that really matches what we're seeing nationally. Uh, You know, we're kind of now at a point where we've got President Trump uh, leading uh, in the real clear politics averages, in the 538 averages, uh, and really uh, tracking the right way in almost every poll in every battleground state across the country. I saw the latest from Nate Silver, and we'll, we'll talk about the, the national race, the presidential race, but I saw that Nate Silver is now giving Donald Trump a 58% chance of winning the election, of winning the Electoral College, which is about the highest margin it's been. The interesting thing as I look at Donald Trump's numbers is that that his ceiling has been about 48% for, for more than eight years now, uh, but his... His floor, I mean, he's never really gone below like 45, 46 percent either, where, whereas Kamala Harris has been all over the place and, and, and seems to be losing the momentum she had after taking over the nomination. Yeah, her, her momentum clearly stalled, right? The sugar high is over. Uh, the honeymoon is over. Uh, coming out of Labor Day, the voters had a chance really, truly to start focusing on this race. And and when you really focus at the fundamentals uh, and you look at what this race is about uh, in terms of whether America is going to have a strong southern border or not, whether we're going to have a strong economy or not, whether we're going to be strong enough on the international stage to protect our interests and protect our allies, uh, you know, Kamala Harris comes up short in every single one of those questions. Uh, So it's not surprising she's losing on the issue polls, which translate into momentum for President Trump in the battlegrounds and, frankly, nationally. So I, I want to get back to the, the presidential race in just a second. We're talking to RNC co-chair Michael Watley here on the Scott Sand Show. Let's talk uh, about the Senate race here in Ohio and, and also my friend Mike Rogers in Michigan. I, I'm seeing numbers, uh, and they, these are two very expensive Senate races, but the Democrats are outspending Republicans by about a four to five, four or five to one margin in both states. Has that put... The Republicans had a disadvantage in, in two seats that we'd love to flip to take control of the Senate? It certainly gives you a bigger hill to climb. There's no question about it. Uh, the amount of money that the Democrats are putting into these Senate races is truly staggering. Uh, Montana, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, we're seeing money uh, that has never been spent. Uh, and the numbers are, are off the wall. But at the same time, uh, we're winning Montana. We're winning Ohio. We're very close in Michigan. We're very close in Pennsylvania. And the momentum is breaking towards the Republicans in every one of these battleground states. You know, when you think about where we are economically, uh, you think about the inflation that is, you know, ravaging our country right now, the higher grocery prices, higher gas prices, higher housing prices. You know, those are all a result of votes that were taken by people like John Tester. Um, you know, people like Sherrod Brown, Casey. So you know, we can we can legitimately point at every one of them as the 50th vote that allowed Kamala Harris to break the tiebreaker on you know 2.5 trillion dollars worth of inflationary spending that sent those prices through the roof, and you know that is hurting Michigan and families and other families all across the big way. Yeah, so, so Chairman, and we're starting to get a lose your cell signal for a second. Uh, does the, the spending put you at a disadvantage in being able to get your message out on TV, or preferably on radio, but on TV, radio, and other stuff? And are, are, do you have enough volunteers out knocking on doors? I know that the young Republicans, I believe, were in Northwest Ohio over the weekend door knocking for Derek Maron and his congressional campaign. 
Uh, but that's been one of the the things that I've I've read as a criticism of this year is that that the ground game seems to be weaker, and and maybe you're, you're focused on digital. Uh, but the ground game, I, I've always thought that, that retail politics, especially in some of these key swing states, was pretty critical. It is, and it's what we do best. You know, we have retooled our ground game this cycle. Instead of just indiscriminately knocking on every door, we're spending our time and effort going after low propensity voters. Uh, that way, uh, when we get these people to vote, we know they're going to vote for us, and we're seeing fantastic results. The early voting in Ohio, the early voting in, in uh, Pennsylvania, in North Carolina, in Virginia, is coming back with, with solid advantages. Uh, we have had more voter contacts than we've ever had at this point in time. And it's, it's a different model than we've run in the past. But we're very excited and we're starting to see it already uh, that's going to pay off. Uh, I could not agree with you more that the grassroots is absolutely critical for what we're trying to do. And it's how we overcome the spending disparities with the Democrats every year. Look, they always have a ton of money. They're going to have a ton of money, no question about it. But at some point, people tune out the airwaves, they tune out the text, they tune out the email, and it really comes down to a five-minute conversation that you have with an undecided voter that's going to sway them one way or the other. So we're on the ground having those conversations, and I really like what I'm seeing in terms of the metrics. Chairman, I'm going to take exception with you. People do not turn, tune out the airwaves. They're, they're, they're hanging on every word that I have to say and take everything that I, that I share seriously at all times. Well, and thank God for it. I will tell you this, you know, um, because you, you look at the traditional mainstream media. You look at ABC, you look at CBS, NBC, and, and obviously they are never going to treat Bernie Moreno or uh, Donald Trump fairly. Right. So we're going to have to go out and create audiences. And I think the talk radio and I think that the, the new platforms that we have generated uh, through podcasts uh, and, and other mediums over the course of the, of the last four to eight years are really, really important. Um, and I think, you know, what you and your listeners do is provide a absolutely critical target audience for us to be able to want to go out and talk to. But you think about Donald Trump goes on Elon Musk. They measured the impact in billions, not millions, billions. There were two billion people that that listened to that podcast uh, across all different platforms. And you look at all of the other shows that he's doing. uh, It really makes a tremendous difference because we know from the traditional mainstream media, uh, we're going to have to go over them, around them and through them. But they're never going to give us a fair shake. And that's okay. We just have to recalibrate and work work with that knowledge. RNC co-chair Michael Watley here on the Scott Sand Show. Let's go back to the presidential race uh, before we're out of time, Chairman. Uh, the president, as I mentioned, was at Coachella over the weekend and, and a big, uh, big rally coming up at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Uh, I understand, I think, the, the, the thought process behind this. You get in the big cities, you're able to get some big media attention, you're perhaps able to raise some money. Maybe you're, you're causing Kamala Harris to take some focus away from the states she's trying to win and, and put some effort into these blue states. But I also, I, I'm also concerned about the strategy of, of every day you spend in a state that you can't win is less time that you could spend in a state that you must win, like Pennsylvania or Michigan. Well, and I certainly understand that, but we're playing offense right now. Uh, Donald Trump is leading in every battleground state. Uh, we're leading in Virginia, and we are having conversations with urban voters, suburban voters, rural voters all across the country. The amount of uh, earned media that he can generate by going into Coachella and having every TV station in California, you know, that helps us with our house races. That helps us next door in Nevada. The same thing that we're doing in New York. We'll get national attention out of those. The other thing that's key is he's not, unlike Kamala Harris, doing just one event a day. You know, he is doing multiple events every single day uh, where he's coming in. He's got, you know, small, tight, directed uh, impact messaging meetings that he's doing. He's got fundraisers that he's doing. And, of course, he's going out and doing the big rallies. So, you know, it is it is pretty much hitting on all cylinders at this point in time. Um, you know, and the, the fact that he was in Arizona and he was in Nevada uh, over the course of the weekend, plus Coachella, uh, it's not like he's flying across the country 
for just one event and then flying all the way back east. RNC Chair Michael Watley on the Scott Sand Show. Uh, I know we got to wrap things up here, Chairman, but you're a North Carolina guy. How's recovery from Hurricane Helene going in your state? It's been it's been tragic to watch this guy from the South who's been through numerous hurricanes. I, I know the devastation that these storms bring. I'm, I'm quite proud of our iHeartRadio sister stations in North Carolina and Florida and across the Southeast that have been bringing information to everybody in those affected areas. Uh, but what's it like on the ground there? I know you were just there with Samaritan's Purse. Yeah, it was really an amazing day with Samaritan's Purse, and I cannot say enough about the operations uh, and and really the soul that they put behind uh, what they do on the ground to try and help people. Uh, The devastation is real. Uh, There's no question about the impact for it. But, you know, the North Carolinians, they're tough. Uh, The mountain folk are tough. Uh, They're going to be out there. We have voting locations are going to open on Thursday for early voting. Uh, we, we, are, we are working right now with the counties to make sure that all of the polling locations are going to be up and running for Election Day. Uh, and it's just a matter of making sure we go out into those communities and reminding everybody how to vote, when to vote, and where to vote. And uh, we're working overdrive right now to try and make sure uh, that we're going to get that messaging out. I think Western North Carolina is going to turn out. Uh, I think we're going to have a very, very strong support for the Republicans up and down the ticket and the support for Donald Trump in Western North Carolina is absolutely off the charts. And I think they're going to deliver. As you're tooling around Cincinnati with Bernie Marino, have you stopped for any skyline chili? Not yet. We walked past it at the airport and said, we're going to have to get it in before the end of the day. (laughs) Yeah, that's probably the smart way. I'm not sure you want to have the skyline chili and then spend a day on the campaign trail and in (laughs) meetings. That's that's probably the best planning. Although I'm not sure you want to be stuck on an airplane after skyline chili either. I'm just saying. Understood, but you got to have it while you're here. <laughs> Chairman Watley on X on Twitter, uh, Michael Watley, Chairman of the RNC on the Scott Sancho. Chairman, have a good time. Tell Bernie I said hi. Thanks so much. Take care.